Right. They discovered him on the streets. So he, so he had no, so he, he's this broken guy moving forward, forcing himself moving forward. But it's interesting. He, you know, I never knew where he lived. I never knew. He was a, you know, solo figure, but the friends that would come in, people that would come in to visit him, the mayor of Burbank, these people that he had, that somehow he connected with. He touched their lives. Yeah. It was just, and, but at the time, at that age, I didn't really, I, I knew he, I, I, know, I never felt better in my life. I knew what he gave me. I didn't know how important it was, really, other than, wow, thank you. I can go forward now. Years later, you start meeting all these famous people. You start, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. And you realize, oh, my God, how special this man was. How much more powerful, how much more magical than anyone else you've ever met. Right. And it also, it's, it's an underlying theme in the book for everybody. Never judge anybody. That ordinary person might have the might be extraordinary for you. Might be able to really help you, help you, connect life. with you, and that's what you need. Uh, he never uh, saw you get famous, huh? No, no, he died when I was nineteen. And I, it, it's fascinating. The book you don't you don't really explain uh, a lot because they're they're quick life lessons. Yeah. So I wish you would, you know, uh, talked more about some of these things that happened to you in your life. But maybe th- maybe you have another book in you. But you came out of my point is you came out of nowhere. Yes. To become a huge star on Happy Days, yeah. the agent story, how you yeah. got your agent oh, was well, amazing. Yeah. Well, that was the agent thing. It, well, I wanted to read I, more about that because that was so fascinating yeah. to me. Well, well, I'm sure we're, I'm, you know, we're all in an industry here where it's very competitive. And I'm sure you all have your same stories. And I'm sure you did it. You are mavericks. And I'm sure you got your breaks in real individualized ways. Right. Well, one thing, you know, Willie, he constantly said, you don't look at the mountain, boy. You climbs the mountain. You climbs the mountain. Meaning you move forward. You, you climb. Don't expect someone. You don't quit looking. Move. Right. So I got a replacement job. Uh, in a musical in, in Hollywood called Victory Canteen, written by the Sherman Brothers. Right. And um, of Mary Poppins fame and all that. And I thought, that's it. I'm in this big show in Hollywood. I'm, they're going to find me. And the cast, you know, the cast that's been there forever said, uh, they're never going to find you. You're going to find retirement home audiences. That's what you're going to find. I go, oh, come on. Well, they were right. Nobody was finding me. Right. It was getting very frustrating. I'm doing the show every night and whatever. So I thought, I, and I... One morning, it was an off, Monday, you know, it was an off day. I get, the, I get this thing in my head. You climbed a mountain. You move forward, boy. Climb. I went, you know something? There are three big agencies at the time. IFA, ICM, and William Morris. IFA and ICM became CMA later. So I went to IFA because it was the closest, and I could get free parking down the street. So I'll never forget. I park, and I'm walking, and there's that building, the mountain. Iconic this, this building. Building. Right. And I am going up to the fifth floor. And I want to, I go up to the fifth floor. There's this big old lobby with IFA letters in the back. And this, like, prima donna receptionist there, you know, all alone. I walk up to her. And she goes, can I help you out? I'd like to see an agent. Who? Uh, an agent. Do you have an appointment? Uh, no, but, you know, I think I'd be good for this. You know, I got the show, Victory Canteen. I just wanted to, sir, you need an appointment. No, I really... You know, I, I, no, I'll just sit. And I'm thinking, there, what the heck? I'll just sit here until someone's available. You know, I mean, just you know, I'll wait. I wait. Mm-hmm. Like King fucking Com- Rupert so, Pupkin. Right, that's so, what I'm so, saying. So, I'll so, wait. I'll wait. So I'm sitting there. From King one of hour, Comedy. One hour, two hours. Yeah. You know, she. I think she. She was going to get a firing squad to get me. You know, and all of a sudden the doors are opening and people looking out. You know, it's like it's getting around. Some stupid kids, you know, doing a sit down strike in the lobby. Finally, after all this time, the door to Nirvana opens. The door into the agency. And there's this guy in this black suit. And he looks around and he goes, Psst, Hey, come here. Come here. Oh, me? Come here. I run up there. I go, Are you an agent? He goes, Yeah, I'm selling them. I'm in Victory Canteen. I'm at Saturday. He goes, he goes, Shut up. Come here. Come in with me. I come in. I'm in the kingdom. Now he's the lowest guy in the totem pole with the smallest office, man, but it was the Taj Mahal to me. I am in. I am inside the beast. And he goes, he goes, listen, we heard there's this pain in the ass kid out in the lobby, you know? And he said, but you're lucky. He said, see this? I go, what's that? He goes, it's a breakdown. Owen Marshall Counselor at Law, which was a series at the time, he said, he said, they got, they need, uh, high school football players, but the guy's got to be over 18. We don't have, we don't have anyone like that. So you're very, you're over 18, right? I go, yeah. He goes, you good actor? I go, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, you know, you're very lucky. I'm going to send you out on this. He says, you get it? We'll sign you. Now, at the time, I had musical comedy experience, nightclubs, not an acting lesson in my life, ever. But I'm excited. John Epstein's office, Universal Studios. I go down there early. There's the sides. Look at it. 
a high school football player who dies of an overdose of drugs, and it's the death scene. And I'm going, and not a dramatic lesson in my li- life. I'm going, okay, climb the mountain. Well, you climb. I thought, okay, what am I? So I thought of the, my, my, when my dog died when I was a kid. I, 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 you know, I, I, literally, as corny as it sounds, that's all I had. <laughs> so, so I go, we go in the office, you know, you know, you know, there's the black tower at the time, it's all intimidating. There's this plush carpeting. There's John Epstein. There's this casting director sitting there. There, I'm, I'm going to read. I'm going to die. <clears throat> And there's this young guy walking around, walking around, kind of looking, didn't introduce himself. So I, I do. So I die, man. And I die good. I, as I'm down on the couch, I go, I'm dying good. This is really good. I can, I can feel it. I'm good. So sure enough, I get the part. Jeez. Directed by Steven Spielberg. Man. Wow. He was the guy in the he room. Was, he was the guy in the room. <clears throat> Some director dropped out. He had already done Duel. He was on his way up. You know, to be the super the Star king. Wars and a, a, a super king, and but <laughs> yes, and that, that's George Lucas. Anyway, um, but um, but uh, he came in as a favor to replace this director. For, it was the last thing he ever did in his life. He didn't know. And in fact, in the uh, unauthorized right. biography, it's it's in it. Right. Never hired me again. But but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I died. I my death was directed by Steven Spielberg, and I got signed by the agency. And guess what? The first major agent came down to see Victory Canteen. All because instead of going, oh, no, 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 I listened to it. I went and climbed the mountain. Right. I put myself in a place. I, and I, again, I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't done like a stupid thing like that. I love the book. I really did. I thought it was great. Like Ope said, I, there was things I wish you would have said more. Like Normally you want less because people talk too long about yeah. it. But you, you gave these a great little summations. It was like, f- it really left you wanting more. Based on what we really told you back in the day. Yeah. I mean, you went out with uh, with Susan Ford. Yeah. Oh, Joe, wow. I mean, you know, come on. I, you know, Jafaka? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, that was like Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that really was. I mean, that was like, that was like, what's so funny? <laughs> no, I, I, you I, I, know, know how that happened? Well, look, look at me like, like I, <laughs> excuse me. 300. <laughs> look, excuse me. Like, no. I'm gonna, like I'm gonna say anything? Are you crazy? <laughs> There's enough security out here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, does this, man, does this face look suicidal? Yeah. <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of fun. Well, anyway, we're, we're a bunch of guys. We want to go far. Is this Howard Stern? No, 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 no. That was great. <laughs> Yeah, I think you just kissed her. Goodbye. I think I think that he's a gentleman. It. I think Nancy Williams a nice yeah, guy. No, he's a gentleman. She was, no, really, she was really, really. Why didn't you guys date after that? No, it was, uh, what, what was funny. The, the real story was, yeah. uh, I got I got um, asked to do America the Beautiful and Norfolk, Virginia, for the Azalea Festival, where she was going to be the Azalea Queen. Right. And I was, I never met her. Just requested to go sing it. So right. I fly, uh, <laughs> so I fly down to uh, sing America the Beautiful. You know, so. Um, and one thing Willie also said, you know, no matter who, how big people are, they got to earn your respect. Right. You don't, you don't accept that. Right. They got to earn your respect. So I, uh, I go there and I go to the rehearsal for, you know, sing the song, Oh, beautiful. Do that. And they go, Hey, would you like to meet, uh, Susan Ford? And I go, well, yeah, I mean, I'm here. You know, so, so meet her and she was kind of rude. And I went, kind of, co- I went, you know, I just flew over and I, like, you know, forget you. So I go to the, the guy who's like putting the whole thing together. I said, I ain't singing America the Beautiful. I'm sitting at the same table. Move me. So they moved me to another table. So we go to the event that night. I sing, um, you know, America the Beautiful. I don't look over there. I don't talk over there. I go back to my table. A little while later, I get a tap. Can you please dance? These people are bugging the hell out of me. And it's her. Wow. So I go, yeah, sure. So we start dancing, and she apologized. She says, you know, I was really, you know, I, I, I didn't mean to, and whatever. And it turned out to be an incredibly nice person. Mm. So had a wonderful time. I mean, had a great time. And I thought, oh, that's great. Then a few weeks later, I get an invite uh, to the White House. They were uh, thanking all the people at the festival for a White House tea. So, again, I was working. Had to go on an all-nighter to get there. Exhausted. Turbulent flight. No one's sleeping. Get there. Go to this hotel. I have maybe a couple hours to like kind of get ready, kind of exhausted. Schlep on over to the White House to the East Room for uh, this tea. 
You know, like, that's nice to see everyone. That's yeah, nice. Wow, nice room. East room. Nice. Great. Big old staircase. All of a sudden, here comes Betty Ford and Susan Ford walking down. There's kind of a line of people. Oh, hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Betty Ford comes up to me. Oh, I heard you did a beautiful job with America the Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, my God. You, you know who I am? Right. So then Susan comes up and goes, um, she goes, hey. I go, hey, nice place you got here. She goes, hey, you should see more of it. I knew it. Stop. <laughs> what? Stop. Stop. I think I'm going to leave this story on this high. <laughs> I say 100 per? <laughs> You want to hear the clip? Okay, here's a cliffhanger. Here's yeah. a clip. You want to know what happens? Yes. Yeah. Buy the book. Uh, oh. wah, 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 wah. The book, by, I got to say, too, uh, there's so many people you've interacted <laughs> with. Uh, there's a story about Betty Davis kind of being shitty. Can you explain quickly your uh, relationship to the Heimlich Maneuver? That was one of my favorite parts of the book. Well, you know. Um, related. You're related yeah, to the guy. He's, he's my cousin, but I've called him uncle. Yeah. My entire life, Uncle Hank. And uh, yeah, in fact, it's just out of coincidence, we got the maneuver on national TV for the first time. Yeah, uh, when you were on Merv Griffin. Yeah. But uh, what I found fascinating, before the Heimlich uh, maneuver, they said that just hitting the back <laughs> real hard was the proper yeah. way. Yeah. And then uh, his cousin slash uncle was like, no, I, 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 I came up with a better way, but no one wanted to listen to no. him. His name is Hank there. Heimlich? Henry, Henry, Dr. Henry, Dr. Henry Heimlich. Henry Heimlich. Hank Heimlich. Hank so, he is cousin. brilliant. So he is it, brilliant. Uh, so then uh, you go on Merv Griffin. Griffin, and you're like, I think I got to help you out, uh, well, cuz. Well, what happened was, you know, again, going, going back to Willie, he says, you know, you, you're going to be in a position to do good. You look, at, you look forward, you look for good. You know, in other words, take your position, yeah. get outside of yourself, and if you get, if you get a connection of like, hey, I can do something here, you damn well do it. You darn well make something better if you can't. So it just so happened, he was visiting on the Happy Day set, and we're hanging out, and I, get, and I had done the Merv Griffin show a while back, and someone had dropped out, so it was a last-minute replacement mm -hmm. on the show. And Merv was great. I, I was on there so many times. And I thought, wait, what, what you know? So I, 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 so I, I told, I, and I said, I said, you know, Hank, one, come to the show. Maybe we can do something. I had no idea how. So he comes to the show. They give him a, you know, a seat in the audience. And, I'm try, and, I, and, 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 I, and I can't find Merv. I can't, and I, then I do my song. And I can't, I go, oh my, I, I'm, this opportunity is going to be lost. So I'm finally put at the panel, and there's like maybe 30 seconds before it starts, I did an elevator pitch about Dr. Heimlich, and he happened to have heard about it. He goes, wait, what? And it comes on, and God bless Merv Griffin, man. He goes, I want to introduce Dr. Heimlich. Oh, he, he introduces him, he brings him up to the stage, he does the maneuver on, on Merv, and lives are oh. saved that night. And that started that started the whole <laughs> what? I didn't, wow. realize, he, I didn't and, realize he went up and actually did yeah, the maneuver on Merv. Merv, I'm sure, was yeah, happy with that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it, came out. But anyway, that was the all thinking the same. Yeah, that's right. Right. Oh, yeah, right. But that was a, that was the start. That was the start of, and then it just took off. And then it was accepted back in 1980, I want to say 86 as the maneuver or something like that. 84. I, I know that uh, the um, Surgeon General, yeah. I think, in 84. 382, somewhere in there, said that is it. That, that's that's going to be the you thing. You were responsible yeah. for getting millions of people to see that life-saving. Yeah. And in the book, and they, they, he has to, they say they have two minutes left with Anson Williams. What? Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Yes, please come out. He's a signing. A he's a really sweet guy. Uh, and the book is honestly great. I'm not just saying that because he's here. Um, the stories about President Reagan in there, fucking Lenin. Um, and, and to me, the whole process you go through of getting happy days was fascinating. You, you, he almost missed the audition because yeah. it was raining and his car got all messed up. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it, it got. You were like hours late. I, I wasn't going to go. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I remembered Willie in the back and saying, you move forward. You go, and something pushed me to go because I thought, what? The, it's got to be over. It's, right. it's And I, ended, I, I, I know we don't have time, but. You get, you'll read the story in the book. you got to come I, back because we're just I getting ended, started. I want to know, know all about Happy Days and, you know, yeah. the show was uh, failing miserably and then they decided to make, you know, Fonzie the yep. the star instead of uh, Ron and Ron Howard recognized like, all right, I got to take a back seat here. Yeah. I'm okay with that. And then next thing you know, went from 48th place to first place. Yes. Number one show in the world. And then it was 10 and a half years, basically. Yes. The you book gotta, is phenomenal. Yeah, you got to come back for real. Anyway. Anson Williams uh, singing to a bulldog. The book's out now. It's the best of the week. It's the best of the week. 
How you feeling, Ron? Uh, great, great, great. Yeah? Yeah. How do I look? Uh, you look all right. You <laughs> Not look the way right. you feel. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Full head of goddamn hair. Oh, yeah. The fuck? It's one of the best head of hairs in comedy. Yeah. In television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of guys on Growing Pains that had better hair than me, but they're, I, they That's were about young it. then. Yeah, yeah, they were young. That was a long time ago. Nick said he, uh, he left you around 1030 last night. Yeah, he did. Uh, it, it was pretty tame. I mean, yeah, the, it was. The, the, the documentary, you know, you can always, uh, if anybody asks me to watch something and critique it, my critique is always the same. Shorter, funnier. <laughs> <laughs> but this wasn't supposed to be funny, but it was right. kind of, like, it, 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 it was, you know, the, the subject matter is PTSD. Which is a real, real thing, and uh, but but it's hard to watch for a long period of time, even if you're um, stoned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it, was, wow. it supports the Armed Forces Foundation, which is my main philanthropic. You, you guys are endeavor, all in so. with supporting. Yeah. We are sure, absolutely. Well, yeah, those he's are. Done the, he's done five troop specials for CMT. Right. That's just tough to watch. It's so sad. It is. It's. It is. It's. I. Uh, yeah. I know. I don't know what to do. I. I just drink more. It's it just makes you drink more. Vic. It does it really yes. But then again, he's like that when people are doing well too. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Have you guys ever hung out sober, you and Vic Henley? I don't believe it's happened once, has it, Vic? <laughs> Not in 29 years. Have you guys known each other that long? 29, 29 years. 29 yeah. years. Yeah. Man, yeah. I heard the uh, unmasked went very well. Although I heard, oh you yeah, were, if you want me, you know, if you want a big emotional uh, Texan on your show, and uh, you know, there, there was, it. yeah, I thought Ron uh, Bennington is that yes, the name. Yeah. I thought he was amazingly good at what he did. He's, I mean, it, he really best. easily steered that interview yeah. to a good place, and it could have gone, you know, it could have gone either way or whatever. But he's a real master. I had no idea. Oh no, he's great. Well, yeah. okay, we yeah. bow to Ron Bennington, man. Uh, but he got you. He got some tears out of you. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, I mean, you know, I got I'm emotional anyway. I just lost my best friend, and so I'm just been a big old pile. Your of manager, crap. huh? Crap, my road manager, and for a long time, yeah, Vic was just yeah, telling yeah, us about was, him. They met when uh, Steve moved across the street from him when they were six years old. So he'd only yeah. known him fifty years, oh, <laughs> fifty one years. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what did he die of? <clears throat> cancer. Oh, so you, skin cancer, know. right? Yeah, yeah, started, just started cancer. just this year. It was started. We, he found out in January, wasn't it, or right, something January, like that? And he was gone about a month ago. Was it one of those things where it was so? Because we've known guys that have had it, and like. Was it so far gone he couldn't do anything, or he was just like, ah, whatever it is? Yeah, no, the, right. the spot that was on his head had been there for 15 years. And he had had people look at it before, and, yeah, and right. uh, they're like, no, that's nothing. Well, it, that's not right. You know, you know it's <laughs> wow. a lot. And it, by then, it was. It was too far gone to uh, do anything about it. And I'll tell you something, uh, he, 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 I miss him to death. And I, but I, I, I'm just now getting to where I can talk about it at all right? Uh, without just falling apart. Right. And, uh, so, But uh, he, one of his jobs was to schmooze us golf on the road. And, and, uh, I love this story. And, uh, so we're, we're playing um, Newport, Rhode Island. And Steve just calls whatever the best country club is in town and tries to swap tickets for golf nice. or whatever. If they say no, no big deal at all. He just goes to the next one. And somebody yeah. will bite. You'll you find know, a course and, eventually. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll take us. Yeah. Well, he calls the Newport Country Club, which is the bluest, bloodest golf course in America. And uh, he gets the pro on, uh, on, on, uh, on the line. He's got his own speakerphone in the bus. <laughs> And Steve gives him his pitch, and the guy goes, uh, we wouldn't let President Obama play here. And Steve goes, he's not with us. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the only thing holding this up. You know. <laughs> that's great. And, 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 Steve, the, and, and the, the guy show. laughed, but he didn't let us play. Right. I don't think he had the authority right. to let right. us play. Uh, I think they have some rules. Don't you think, there. I mean... Besides your political uh, affiliation, that's, that's that's a dick move. It's a total dick move to not let Obama oh, yeah. to not yeah, let a president on your golf course. Move. The president of the United States of America, right. you gotta you're gonna rule him out for what? What, what, what was the criteria? Their, what is their thinking that yeah, went behind know. that? I don't know. Me and the Bloods don't hang out, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Blue Boys. They would like you, though. The Bloods would like you. I don't know. I Crips don't know. as well. They would enjoy Ron White. <laughs> we got to hang out at the uh, Kennedy compound uh, this summer for three really? days. And, yeah, my wife called me. I was on the road, and she calls, guess what I won? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, won? She was at a big charity event that's Bobby Kennedy's charity called The Waterkeepers, which is a great organization. And 
And I'm, what'd, what'd you win, honey? A, a weekend at the Kentley compound and dinner with Ethel and... and uh, what? The, yeah, 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 it was. Right, right. right. I, yeah. Wow. And uh, They're actually giving that well, away? Well, it yeah. it's not... I, well, no. Here's oh, the, okay. Because that sounds crazy. Here's, here's, here's the here's the, here's the I believe there's a bid involved. There was a $20,000 donation. Oh, right. Jeez. All right. Wow. And, yeah. Uh, Plus lunch. <laughs> right. You gotta pay for lunch. Well, no, they paid for lunch. And it was, it was an amazing thing. I didn't even want to go. Because I'm like, you know, I bet people buy this and then don't go. And they just make the donation. Right. And, right. and we're going to be out there knocking on a big gate. No, Ron White. Yeah, comedian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got my money in there. Come on. Uh, $20,000? I told him yeah. yes. And Margo, that's, you know, Margo rolls big. Margo knows what she's doing. Find yeah. a $5 item and order 4000 of them. That's fucking horrendous. $20,000. So what do you get for 20000 at the, the compound? Uh, well, you get to uh, the, the joy of giving. <laughs> right. So far, nothing. <laughs> you get nothing, Ron. <laughs> the joy of giving? Oh, for joy, one. We, no, it, uh, it was great. We... Uh, the, the all you know they're they're all it's you know in the summer they've been having summers there all their lives and there before that there was another generation that was there and mm -hmm. there were five year olds and you know right that's where they spend their you know, their time and they were great it, the Max Kennedy was uh, had this they the couple of them have big sailing racing boats and uh, he took us out on these things and. You know, the, just uh, uh, the Shrivers, uh, Anthony Shriver uh, and his kid. We got on a little, uh, not a little, uh, but, a, but a center console boat with a couple of big motors on it. Yeah. And his, his little kid is taking it away from the pier. And, 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 and then just as soon as he gets away from the pier, he just floors this thing and jumps out. And, and he's going, his, and, and his dad's calling him Captain. They call the turn. Veer to the left, Captain. And this little kid <laughs> down here like this. Why? And I'm like, I'm going to ease my eyes down to his level and see what he can see. Not a thing. Not a thing. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Garmin. 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 The word Garmin. That was all you could see. How old was this kid? If you had a guess. Uh, he was five. <laughs> No, five years old. <laughs> yeah, five years old. And literally, there was a big ferry coming in and a boat going this way. And he goes through the middle. This kid just Wah! and just jumping this boat, just oh crazy, crazy. And I was like, man, this kind of borders on bad parenting, dude. And he goes and instills self confidence. And I tell you what, the kid was confident. He's as confident as a goose crossing the street, man. He was a, Yo, what you gonna do about it, bitch? <laughs> and uh, it was, it was, uh, but it was fun. And then uh, we went out on. Uh, there was another Kennedy had a yacht. He went out on his boat too, and you know, full big full moon out on this thing. It was nice, you know. And they're well, d they're, so they're, you're they're, staying, they're professional hosts. You're really. staying in the house for three days. Well, there's a few houses. It's a it's a yeah, compound, it's, and, right. and, and there is no wall. You can walk right into it. You right. can walk right up to Ethel Kennedy's house. I mean, somebody will stop you. But we used to drive yeah. right up to it back in the day yeah, just to check it out. It's no, uh, yeah, they, it, there's no uh, no fence, no gate, not no much nothing. security whatsoever. Walk, sure. And they've always been that way. Yeah. And you can walk the beach and pretty much walk out by. Well. <laughs> right, exactly. the beach is public property. Right. Well, what you say? Something to be said for security. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> to be honest, right. you think they would have learned by now? Yeah, how'd that work out for them? Yeah, not well. All right, before September 11th, I used to live over at, uh, at 86 in New York and you could walk to Gracie Mansion there was one guy but before September 11 you could just walk up there and you could just walk up there and, and, and bang on the door and bang on the door if you wanted to I thought uh, it was great and and just a lot of Kennedys uh, wandering around huh yeah the uh, do they all look like the like the elders the, the Shrivers they're all pretty but the Shrivers are the prettier ones, the good looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would, uh, I would get an apartment with Anthony Shriver. <laughs> yeah, that, that dude is hot. That is a hot dude, man. And, and Ethel's hanging in there. You get to Ethel. Yeah, you just sat right next to her for dinner and uh, and talk to her. All I did was just, you know, just kept her talking. You know, she How old was just eighty eight, I think, and and uh, just lucid and smart as she can be. And you know, that's. And that's also where most of the money is on the Shriver side of the family because their great grandfather or great great grandfather or whatever had been invented graphite. And uh, that's a good one to have. Yeah, it sure is. That's a good one. Yeah, graphite's a good one. That. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, wow. get, that's every what fucking. Keeps it going. That's what's in pencils, right? Yeah. 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 Jesus really. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Who said I get a piece of every dumb joke I've ever written? <laughs> <laughs> 
saw that as being something successful. Oh, wow. Graphite. You never think that every little Fuck. day-to-day item you use, somebody right. is a is a is probably a 300 millionaire because of that item. Exactly right. But they were, they were very cool, and the houses are not extravagant at all, and they, 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 it's just yeah, their summer places. I mean, they live other places the rest of the year. But they have these massive kitchens hooked to them with a big staff, so the food rocks, rocks, rocks. <laughs> so it's it's kind of a humble looking little thing, little kind of. Yeah. And uh, but we had we had we had a blast with them. Connor, uh, the Bobby's kid, who's just going to uh, starting college, and you know he had all his party buddies over there just drinking like fish in this garage they'd cleaned out. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. Did you see the uh, documentary on Ethel Kennedy where they're interviewing yeah. her daughter? It was, so it was good. amazing. Yeah, really, yeah, right, great. and I think most of, I mean, she's always been a very private person, and I don't think anybody knew anything about no, it. I didn't, I didn't even know yeah. she had 11 or 12 kids Correct. or whatever it right. was, and mm. and uh, and I told her that when I was eating, having dinner with her, I said, uh, I said, I'm, I, you know, a big family's just never made sense to me, and she goes, well, it makes sense to you this way. How many kids you got? I go, one. And she goes, how many do you have if he dies? I said, none. She goes, guess how many I have when two die? Ten. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? What the right. fuck? That's right. I lost hundred percent. I lost a hundred percent of my kids in one fell swoop. Yeah, she's got them still all over the place. And she's lost a couple of them. Was so. she joking when she said that? Oh, that's hilarious. God. She was. Oh, she was. Oh, that's <laughs> really funny. You don't want to laugh out loud, then you realize a tears on her cheek. <laughs> right. I guess you got to have a sense of humor. Oh, I got eighty. Yeah. Right. Uh, any memorabilia in the house that impressed you? Tons, man. Just tons. Just the photo. Photographs were just crazy, really? crazy, and and everything is you know it's that's where it all happened. I mean, uh, the president's house is still there intact, and the relatives live in all of them. You know, like Bobby's house is where Bobby lived, and uh, and and Ethel when they were younger, and Ethel's house is just right in front of that. But in her house, the uh, the just the the photographs are, were just amazing to look at. Even in the bathroom, you could spend an hour in there going, "Geez, Louise, did yeah. these people know yeah. some people?" <laughs> right. <laughs> So, and then uh, Margo sang for her and uh, sang uh, Over the Rainbow, and her best friend was uh, Judy Garland, right. who lived right down the street, and uh, she got a big old tear out of uh, Ethel with the... Now bad, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 That, that is a hell of a story. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, a hell of a weekend. Right. You can't have a shitty time hanging out with the Kennedys for the weekend. It right. has to be fun. I don't... Yeah, I don't... And, and, and Bobby was... Uh, Bobby hadn't had a drink in 10 years, so I, you know, I thought it would be a little rowdier than it was. I was still rowdy, but I was kind of being rowdy by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not much fun. No, no, we had a blast. It was. It was. It was. Uh, I was glad I went. I thought it was a good deal. And yeah, know. I was the only thing when he told me for a second. He he told me she had done this, and, and he was. We won this. Well, actually, my, I'm, he's. Like, I might not go. I'm like, might not go. You gotta Are go. Are you kidding me? You have, have to go. go. Gotta right. go. No, but for I, a second, I, 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 I did. Like he but wasn't but, go but, for but as second. we were going, I bitched the whole way. So <laughs> I, made, <laughs> I made something very special. And I turned it into a pain in the ass for my wife. So, <laughs> and that's my gift. That is my gift. <laughs> He's good at it. <laughs> what didn't you? What, what what turned you off about it? Like the whole I can't work this weekend, or what was it that made you go? What the fuck? No, I just that I didn't. I just didn't know what you know. I, I I've bought guitars at auctions that everybody signs, and I give it back. I just didn't think it because I knew some other people that had done that and didn't go. Uh, um, John Paul DeJoria from Patron and Paul Mitchell was a friend of mine, and he's bought it five times and never been. Really? So yeah, but I didn't know that when we, when it first happened. But then I'm like, oh, people don't go. They they're, they're going to look at me. They're going to forget they even did it. Yeah. And uh, they're not going to know oh, how sure. to act or whatever. But it was not true at all. They, uh, Bobby picked us up at the airport and uh, with Cheryl Hines, his wife, and uh, or soon to be wife, and then and wow. uh, and you know they were just gracious people, just as nice as they could be. He right. you up at the right. airport, <laughs> Bobby Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. His father says that. His father was the attorney general, yeah. Robert Kennedy. Yeah. That, yeah, guy? Yeah, that guy. Jesus. Robert Kennedy's right cool guy, and he's a cool guy. Did yeah. he help you with oh, your yeah. bags? Did he, a, did he help you with your bags I and put them in the car? I don't yeah. remember that happening. He picked you up at the airport. Right. It's it's funny and they and they don't drive super nice cars and they, and they, most of them look like they've you know run into a couple things and and uh, they just started making that little kid whose name was Max I believe no it's, I don't remember his name but he was uh, they just started making him wear a helmet when he rode his scooter around town. And that was the new deal. That was the new. We're all right. We're going to put some rules down here. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be blazing around. They got dogs that bite 
uh, bite people. And <laughs> they, but they were they had a big thing. They they were uh, a big trial uh, for Ethel's dogs, yeah. uh, and they had all these people that testified that they got bit by Ethel's dogs. But they all described a different do- uh, dog, and Ethel goes, "Oh, they all bite. That's <laughs> that's how we get away with it." <laughs> That's how we get away. What a with great it. story! So oh, they, you, you pay some twenty grand for a weekend there, and and they they host you and actually spend time with you. Yeah, and I I, I took a couple things worth about fifteen grand. I don't blame yeah. so them. I think I made alone. a little. Yeah, they're just nice. Yeah, do yeah, so they pat you down on the way out? <laughs> yeah, hey, give it up. Give it up. Come on, we uh, know. All right, Fabergé. <laughs> Fabergé egg. Any other celebrities there with you? Well, Cheryl Hines is you know sure, was, right? just uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Melissa Etheridge went out on the boat with us one night and uh, uh, with her daughter, I guess. And uh, uh, but you know a lot of I mean a few celebrities live out there. Wait, but, is that the David Crosby daughter? Must be. Right. Well, I don't know. She's got a couple of kids, so it might not oh, be. All right. uh, uh, isn't she gay? Yeah, but Crosby yeah. gave up his sperm, so yeah, yeah, Melissa yeah. Etheridge oh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah, one of her children. I think you're right. I think yeah. that's oh, it I've been offering my cum to people, and no one will take Nobody, it. <laughs> no, no takers. No, do you want it? I'll just hand it to you. <laughs> I find that story fascinating, because Crosby out of nowhere is helping out Melissa Etheridge and his uh, and her wife at the time. Right. I think they're now split. Right. That's the wife that left Lou Diamond Phillips to go yeah, with, exactly. uh, to go with uh, Melissa Etheridge. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Right, right. That's also great, though, when your wife leaves you and she just stays out of the fucking gender. You're like, all right, I can handle that. I can handle that. Okay, I, I couldn't have fixed this. Yeah. There was nothing I could do. No, no, no there's nothing. That's not, definitely not my fault. Yeah, her point going. Right. It wasn't yeah. that it was too small that she no. was yelling yuck. Yeah. Okay. Man. <laughs> I saw Lou Diamond Phillips on Letterman once talking about that, and that was basically his attitude. Really? Because yeah, Letterman was like, well, you seem to be okay with it. He goes, hey, it's not my fault. Well, I didn't do anything. No, I, can't <laughs> I can't change this shit. Don't care at all, right? Didn't, yeah, not one only God can. Yeah. Not one bit, buddy. No problem. Yeah, if, you're, if your wife leaves, it's probably difficult. But if, you're, if someone's gay, it's like, ah. Especially if you're from Texas. If you're from Texas, they don't teach you that, hey, you're, at any moment, your wife might go gay on yeah, you. Yeah, let's <laughs> be honest. There's a lot worse people your wife could leave you for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ron, were, you, were you close to uh, Robin Williams? Well, n- no, no, I wasn't. But I was just going to get a show you a picture of that. Yeah, please do. Oh, oh, wait, I didn't. I that, mean, I that's uh, that's Anthony Shriver at fifty one. This must be a good looking oh, man. Jesus. That's a good looking man. Let, let me I'm see. The, I've, I've been told I look like today. him. You've been told. <laughs> I'm going to the gym today. Oh, God. Yeah, my wife wonders why oh, that's the, the only fuck? picture I saved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's wearing blue long shorts yeah, like, and he's giving a dreamy, over the right shoulder look. <laughs> right. It really should be a screensaver. Yeah. <laughs> he looks yeah. like he could be 30, a good man. 30 right. two yeah, years exactly. old. Looks like Kelly Slater. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I really think that Arnold helped him with that upper body. Yeah, I think he got a few tips. Yeah, I think so. God damn it. Uh, so you weren't close to Robin, because someone said you guys talked about that a little bit on the Unmasked. Yeah, we, we went to, it was just, uh, I mean, they, my line is uh, that uh, I had a brief bout with sobriety that I was able to overcome with the help of my friends, and uh, <laughs> and that, that uh, was, uh, started a rehab in Malibu, and I needed probably needed to be there, and, and uh, I wasn't doing real well with it, you know, I just... Uh, was struggling and uh so they said hey you got a secret lunch and thing they're gonna be somewhere nobody can know who it is nobody's gonna go but you and so they uh took me to the bel-air hotel and took me to a table and it was robin williams and bob goldthwaite wow and uh now i knew that they were really good friends and i'd bob had been sober for 25 years and i don't know but and we didn't talk about uh sobriety at all uh we just i, I was like pitching him jokes and stuff and he was completely on i mean the whole two hours i spent with him he was on point and that's the only thing anybody ever saw so you you know you don't know what's going on behind it because you don't see it you know? how long ago was this no, oh, I don't know. I'm not good with years, like six, I guess. Or, yeah. No, yeah. seven. Seven, probably. And uh, never saw him again, and uh, he gave me his phone number, never called him. I just and I didn't. Uh, but that, you know, so so his death, I was moved by his death. And, and, it, and the ironic thing was that my friend, Steve, was dying at the time. And so he was at my house in, in California. Uh, when they got the news that Robin had taken his life, and he goes, "Man, I'm just I'm doing everything I can to live," and this guy seems to have everything and, and takes his right. life. None of this makes sense, you know. And did he know? Did your friend know that there was? There was did they say to him like, "Look, man, this is this is kind of how much time you have"? 
Uh, well, we didn't listen. You know, we I, I never for a second uh, let myself think he wouldn't make it. You know, because we we threw everything at it, but the kitchen sink and it, but it was stage three melanoma. And, and nobody's saying anything good about stage three melanoma. It's a gets a crafty fucker, and yeah. uh, so you know, so it, it got him. But you know, they were they were saying that you know there were some miracle drugs floating around, and we were about to go to Mexico and try stupid stuff, and just to see if we could get something to jump start it, and but nothing worked. Fuck. So that yeah. sucks. Yeah, it's always the worst of the because there are people that, that will make it through with some miracle or, or a holistic thing, and right? Right. All yeah. of a sudden, it works for them, and then just doesn't work for the next person. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's no guarantees, you know. That, and we, we, there was a new drug called PD one that that while he, that was an experimental drug, but it just got approved. And uh, but <laughs> we took him to California to have these. He had lesions on his brain, and we we're going to have this gamma knife surgery. Uh, to do it, and, and I was making a lot of the calls, you know, because he, you know, he doesn't know, you know, we're, and neither do I, you know, he's a couple of idiots trying to figure out cancer, and uh, and whoever you talk to, they're selling something. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at that. No, no, I know. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that I know. concept is a, that's a good one to Well, we were right. talking right. the whole time. You should have heard right. us. We're yeah. all talking at night. Well, when we, none of us know a goddamn thing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but, they, but, but the cancer doctors sell what they have to sell, you know, so whatever that is, you know, right. that, and, 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 and even Steve would tell you, that he shouldn't have done anything. He should have just let it run its course and kill him. Yeah. Because the day they cut him, his quality of life was over with. And then the chemotherapy and radiation, he had no more good days after that. You know, he had more lucid days and, uh, you know, but, uh, but it was over the day they cut him. And, and, uh, and he said, man, I would have just drank Budweiser and died on a golf course. That's what I should have done. And, Two of his uh, favorite things in the world and was good at both of them. Yeah, <laughs> golf and uh, Budweiser. How did he know he had it besides the fact that they, they was a thing? Was there a symptom one day that just showed up and he went, oh, fuck, this is a problem? Uh, yeah, he had hit his head on the bus getting something out of the bay and, and, uh, and, it, and it hit that spot and it just wouldn't heal. And so his, uh, one of his therapists, you know, he was always rehabbing something and, uh, said, you gotta have that looked at. And, and he had just had some plastic surgery done and his plastic surgeon saw it every time he came in and went, oh, that's nothing. <laughs> and like, wouldn't you just check, you know, right. because even that would have been a year and a half earlier. Of and course. who knows, you know, might have, who, who, who knows? knows? Yeah, you can second guess who the, the fuck shit knows? out of it. That's, right. that's all we've done. So. Um, you, you mentioned Robin Williams, you know, why would he do that with everything he had going for him? And now, you know, a lot of this stuff is finally coming out that he was suffering from dementia. What's it called? Louis, Louis, Louis something? Uh, it was L-E-W-E-Y, right? Louis dementia, I think. Louis body dementia? Something like that. So it started. Yeah, I didn't even know it that. It started to make more sense. And then supposedly early stages of uh, Parkinson's. Parkinson's. And so... People saying he just yeah. wasn't right. He but saw the writing on the wall. Near the end there, be bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Louis Body Dementia. Key oh, dementia. factor in Robin Williams' suicide. That came out, uh, I believe, this week while we were on the radio. Did you just remember ago. that? Or did you, you yeah, were somewhere? Yeah, well, we were talking about oh, it. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Between the two of them, they can put together a whole sentence every now and then. Once in a while. He said Louis, and I said body. Yeah. That's the way it always works. Well, because we, we remembered it because of the famous Louis Beans. Louis Beans, yeah. Right. Rich Voss is famous. Rich uh, Voss thing, where we set him up bad. <laughs> and he humiliated himself. Yeah, he, he had to do a line from... Uh, uh, a whole scene uh, from uh, 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 the Bronx Tale. Yeah, Bronx Tale. Jesus, of course, yeah. That was a good one-man show, too, when we got to see that. Yeah. Um, so what do you do now? Like you know, you you haven't been on the road since your friend died. And you oh no! I no. Oh, you have. We, oh, yeah. 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 I, I went, I we did uh, that weekend. Yeah, uh, we, I was with him. We that went weekend. Oh, wow. we, had, we had a service and a party. We had a what you, a good old send off uh, honorarium Irish wake kind of thing at Ron's house in Atlanta, and then we were on the bus the next day and did a show in wow. Columbus. How was that? You know, I've always it seems like that's always been able something I've always been able to shove things aside, and uh, I did make this uh, the mistake. I do there's a little part at the, towards the end of the show where I'll talk, you know, <coughs> recognize the other acts right. in the back of the house and all that stuff, and I tried to do a toast to him and start crying, but. I thought, well, that's just not a good idea. Yeah, at least you yeah. didn't open with us. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's a tough place to start. Before we get started. Yeah. Oh, God. Man. Yeah, so. that's rough, man. When, especially when the audience knows it, too. Uh, like uh, when, when Kennison died, Kenny tells the story because he was with Dice about how Andrew had a moment of silence for the audience, and, you know, for Sam. And that's always awkward because the crowd knows something terrible has happened, and now you have to come out and... Right. Perform. And hit him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that, uh, but we, but I made it uh, made it through those shows, and I've I've always literally my first wife. I, I was on somebody handed me a phone. I'm in the green or in the office of the comedy club, and she goes, "I want a divorce." And the other the other, the next noise I heard was, "You're on in one minute, Ron." And I'm like. I gotta run. Yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta run. So, but you know, you go out there, but you block it. Did you get out. divorced? Yeah. But did you? Yeah. You must have saw it coming, though. So it wasn't that much of a shock. Oh no, no, no. But, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't. But it was yes. official that all right, right it, this thing has finally happened. Yeah. yeah but you had did. a great set, and it had to be a ritual. Now, could you yeah. just call me and threaten divorce <laughs> before every show? <laughs> yeah, he's superstitious. He's yeah. probably yeah. skipping around the stage. The only time I got never saw him happier. Yeah, he did two and a half hours. Couldn't get him the damn thing. <laughs> Close with a song, right? <laughs> Happy days are here. <laughs> wow, that's a uh, weird thing to hear, right? Before, how many? Is this, you, you, you're on your second wife now, or third? I don't. Third. I, there was that tall girl. <laughs> <laughs> I can never remember her name. It was Becky or Jennifer. <laughs> You're up to three? Four. Is yeah, he four? four. four. You're yeah, the fourth four. wife. Well, four. One of them I never married, yeah, but we were right. together for a long, long time. time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, but, Why do you keep, do you, do you just like being married? Because some guys like uh, I do. I love being married, and I'm horrible at it. I'm just horrible <laughs> at it. And, uh, but I, you know, I'm better than ever, you know, at, uh, at doing it. I, you know, she, Margo's engaging and, you know, fascinating to me and, yeah, you know, the most talented person I know, and and uh, so that only goes so far. But uh, she's uh, known us for thirty years, which has right, yeah, she's a her, thir- yeah, she's right, a thirty. Yeah, we've known her since we started open. He was open micing in Texas, and her brother, who's Alex Ramundo, who's a comic and a friend of ours, and opens for him. He was the bartender. Wow! So right. yeah, it does help that we've known Margo. Margo's a thirty year friend that he finally started. Yeah. He finally and, after thirty years. Yeah. What is what's how I operate when I see something I want twenty years later? Yeah. I ask her brother yeah. for her phone number. And, <laughs> Why do you say she's the most talented person you know? What does she do? Because the only other friend oh, is yeah. Henley. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Margo's a singer songwriter, okay, uh, composer. Okay, and, uh, right. she's a, she's a genius. I don't even care about the yeah. answer anymore. Yeah, that's good. That was great. Are you still paying some of the exes? Are you are you clear yet on some of these? Or? Well, my 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 first wife. Uh, when I got a divorce from her, uh, she I was married to her for 12 years, and she had my only child. And uh, she got uh, a dryer that was uh, her cut of the whole thing that we had there. It was a wow, dryer. that's true. Wow, that's, that's, true. True. that's true. That's completely true. Did she still call in bomb threats to her lawyer? <laughs> what a terrible fucking well, job she was did. making more money than us put together. When, uh, oh, this uh, is yeah, before. Yeah, okay. She was stocking shelves in a grocery store, so <laughs> making more money than I was. And But that's just what we didn't. I mean, I let her have. We had a little house, and I let her have that and the dryer. And, wow. And the dryer. Yeah. Right. I would have let her keep the washer, too, but it was broken. So <laughs> okay. <that's>, uh, <laughs> I oh, you got off easy on that but, one. Yeah, it was. Uh, but, but and then uh, and I was married to one woman for three and a half years, no kids, but the wrong three and a half years, and oh. she walked off with uh, cash and prizes. Oh no! Uh, and uh, and stuck me with a million three hundred thousand dollar lawyer bill. Million the lawyer was a million three. Yeah, between the two of them that I was paying both sides on a million three. Yeah, I was. I was. That, yeah, that was cool. I, and, and then that, you got it. Almost killed me. I, 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 was I walked you around the reservoir that day up and say, "Hey, well, this all was going on." He was in town for something. I'm like, "Here." He's like, "I'm about, I'm about to kill somebody." I'm like, "Here, you need a whole lot of walking and sunshine. Come with me." Yeah. And then I just had him out there walking as much as I could, yeah, just, just doing laps, just walking. Not because it was ridiculous, right? That's it's just not unfair. That's what I kept saying for the all guys. Afternoon. Right. Yeah. I just kept loading the bowl and saying that. A million <laughs> three. <laughs> was there a point? That, let me ask you. Her lawyer fees should come out of the settlement at the very at the very. Fucking least, because yeah. yep. yeah. that's before the settlement. No, I, it's, yeah, and it's a, it's after tax money. I mean, I I paid taxes on there. I can't of course. write that. That's what I couldn't get in my arm. I really can't even write this off. You couldn't. <laughs> it's just no, no. It's fucking lawyers, man. And, and I, they, they, somebody asked me, I bet you hate your wife's uh, divorce lawyer. I, said, I hate my divorce lawyer <laughs> yeah. just as much as I hate hers. It's a tie, a dead tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, that I told her, I said, uh, listen, if uh, if your kids are going to grow up to 
to be a divorce lawyer, you should go home, take them upstairs, put them in the bathtub, and drown them and make this world a better place. <laughs> Which so, she didn't nah, yeah, think was, was funny. Yeah, at no, all. she probably didn't react no, the same no, way. I didn't just mean did. for no. it to be funny. It yeah. was literal. I think it, the world would. I mean, just, just they're just vultures. For a three book. and a half year. Ah, what point? No, no, what point in the negotiation? Like when you're breaking up and you're like, okay, this is done. At what point when you both have lawyers do you realize I have to settle? Like what? What's the tipping point where you're like, this is about to get even more disgusting and I have to settle this. Uh, you know, was, I just, financially, I, I mean. I just something? couldn't take it anymore and I was literally, I was really close to having a trial and she wouldn't have gotten that uh, the, but I was just, uh, literally, as uh, some weeks I paid, the, or months I paid the lawyers uh, over a hundred thousand dollars, and my lawyer one time it was like eighty thousand bucks for the month, and she goes, "And we gave you a discount," and I'm like, "Fuck oh, you, fuck. Right. really? Uh, could you show it to me on this bill?" That should have come out of the settlement. Absolutely right. That's yeah. At the very least, least, that's three and a half years. Work. So she got you for a few million, then obviously. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, and and you know what? And I would have given it to her anyway. It, it, it was it was fine. But it could have been settled over a, a, a bottle of wine and a sandwich, you know, right. and a handshake, and yeah, here you go. And I and because no one got that one point three. No, no, yeah, nobody got that. I mean, fuck. Here's one point three because I'm, I'm going to spend that on the lawyers anyway, yeah. and then we'll f figure it out from there. What's the justification for that? Like, if only three and a half years of marriage, no kids, you're both kind of like, you know, you're already Ron White when you meet, or you, did you meet her before you hit, or you no, already doing uh, well? No, it was the first time she ever saw me. I was with the Fox in Atlanta. Oh, so, okay. You know, you don't get there. You know, I would. Now I wasn't making the kind of money. That that I made, but I, but it, the blue collar thing had already happened and it was going, and I'm angry. She obviously right now. had. Oh, yeah, I'm angry. I don't even know her. That, I don't that, know that Ron day, that well. Right. That day in the park, I can't remember exactly, but he was. I'm, again, I'm just loading the Fuck. bowl and going. You're right. I'm loading the bowl and going. You're right. He's like, I have. She had. She had a business, and he's like, I offered her her greatest year. She made this amount of money. I offered her 100 times. <laughs> 100 times her greatest year salary ever, and she's like, fuck you, that's not enough. Get out of here. <laughs> anyway. Wow. Did you guys have a, a really bad breakup, or was it a basic breakup? Yeah. Uh, I mean, why did she want to make it hurt so much yeah. instead of being reasonable? Uh, what did you do wrong? Why would I say oh, reasonable? <laughs> See how you guys just fuck. jockey for a position to blame this on me? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I'm totally... Well, what could you do that would justify her? What, did you fuck a small animal in front of her and kill it? <laughs> uh, well, number one, she wasn't that small. The, <laughs> she was, uh, uh, she was the, the, the dental hygienist at the... Uh, and they, you know, they give you drugs. You know, you're not responsible for what you do with the dental hygienist, are you? Not never, <laughs> never. So, what, oh, did she catch you doing something bad? I mean, like, how, uh, that, yeah, that kind of came. I mean, I was going to leave anyway. I mean, I just could. You know, she would just look at the internet all day, and she's way smarter than me, and way smarter than me. And and so she would just look for things to question me about. Like if somebody said, thanks for signing my autograph, uh, my girlfriend's ticket. Oh, you're out selling, signing women's tickets after the show. Now, they're just trying to find something. And, and it's literally, it got to the point where every time she turned on her computer, I'd get sick to my stomach because you can catch me doing something. I don't hold up to scrutiny worth a shit. You know? <laughs> it is. Uh, really don't. Never have. Do you remember the moment when you knew your fucking, your ship was sunk? Like when you were like, ah, oh, this one, there's no backing out of. She got me. Yeah, well, you know, did, uh, I knew that, that you know, there were the, you know, the laws in, uh, in Georgia where we were married or, you know, that pretty clear, you know, that she gets a big cut of it and, uh, and I think the jury would have given me less, but I just couldn't do it anymore. Not so I, clear because yeah. you had to pay a hundred, a one point three to get to the the clear part. Right. You look thinner though. Does that matter? Yeah. Well, I started. Uh you know, I started smoking again, and I started puking every third meal. <laughs> <laughs> it never really matter which meal you puke either. That's Not the beauty of the program. You can just pick one. You know, how, how did you? How I'm did looking you, for something at this tray. I'm going to throw up a like place. This is all sorts of shit. How, how did you finally get over that, or you're still kind of fucking bothered by that whole thing? I'm not bothered by it anymore. I mean, it, it, and I don't think about it that often, but it, it's just. Uh, you know, it's just something that happened, and they, they practice law like it's 1750. I mean, everything's gotten better over the years. Football helmets, skateboard, whatever. They have improved it, but they still practice divorce law like it's 1750, and these two right. lawyers had me in an alley, yeah, and they were just true. kicking my ribs in, and uh, there was nothing I could do. I could not stop it, and I, there was nothing I could do to slow it down. Well, something's got to be done with that shit. And nobody gives a shit about rich people. You know, so if you, you, you're you a rich guy, you're telling your woes, they're like, you know, nobody gives a shit. I don't even care. I, I, I would assume you would have spent that 1.3 uh, uh, differently. 
and probably would have helped a whole I bunch of folks I out. I would have smoked it with Vic. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's, that's a hell of a story. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, was, that was wild. So, I was around for so much. She didn't like me. so I, you know, She didn't like any of my friends. Yeah. And that was, that was also a problem because I've... My friends don't change, you know. Right. My friends are the same friends. Yeah. And, uh, I, I like asking, how early in the relationship were you realize, oh boy, this is not going to be good in the end? Were there, were the there, third were date, there, I think, was uh, <laughs> yeah, there were some signs <laughs> that I didn't look at. That, I'll see things in a win a girl. Like, oh no, not that! And then I'll just put blinders on. Go, oh yeah, no, yeah. she's yeah. perfect. Yeah. She's the one for me. Yeah. This is the one that's different. And. Uh, you know, they, they, the thing is, she, she wasn't a horrible person. She was smart, and she was just a woman scorned, and uh, I guess, and uh, and she just came after it. So, and she got it, and then she bought a house right around the corner from my house, and <laughs> she stole the gazebo out of my backyard. I love this story. This thing set in two feet of concrete posts. She has Completely people true. dig it up because I got the house. I got, I got both houses, and uh, but she got the everything else and just about and she had a crane come over and go over the house and pick it up and then take it down to her house and put it in her <laughs> yes, backyard. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, am, I am. Com I com I'm, in I'm in love with her. Yeah. <laughs> what? what? She's available yes. and she's wealthy. What a genius! <laughs> <laughs> what was her reasoning for the gazebo? Just was to make her it hurt? debate me and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know and I you know what I did when I saw it? Oh like, my! God. I this is the, good though. This I, I called the uh, I called the carpenter and said, "Come build me another one because I'm not going back to court." I'm not going to go sue her for this, you know, thousand dollar thing. After all that, you know, I'm just not getting back. She in it. grabbed so. your gazebo after with a crane. And with a crane, crane, crane in, went over the house in with front the crane. of all the <laughs> neighbors. Everybody saw yeah. it. She yes. didn't give a crap. You right? can't <laughs> sneak a gazebo out of the yard with a crane. <laughs> no matter how late you do it, people hear the crane. <laughs> and how close she lives? She got a house just down the street. Yeah, right around the corner from me in the same subdivision. Are you and still in that like, house? And then, uh, and then she she eventually she sold it and okay. moved out to California where I live. Yeah, she moved out. She moved out there next to him out there too. Didn't Margot go rollerblading? What? Who? Margot looks good by the way. Margot is a good looking woman. I thought Margot went rollerblading by after the gazebo. Yeah, she's out there in a little camo shorts, rollerblading yeah. backwards she's down like, the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, steal, yeah, steal my goddamn junk out. Steal my gazebo, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, and that's a good victory. If you, that was a perfect. I like Margo told so, me that. I'm like, way to go, Margo. Someone just told me I was going to go to him. They said that uh, the laws are different. There's separate lawyer bills. I don't know. I don't know if it's it's like that across I, the board. I consider myself an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I hope that's true because that's the guy. I well, mean, they, yeah, over they, and over again gets they were fucked in these her divorces. Bills and my bills. But all the money was coming from that's me. That's what I mean. Yeah, but, a, right. that, so you got to pay. You can't not give her money to pay her bills Absolutely. with. That's against the same, law. So. Same thing happened to our pal Anthony. Man, he got fucked, and he had to pay her, her lawyer bills on top of it. Yeah, the, sure. and they had nothing. They didn't even have a. They didn't even have a car. Basically, I think they had a car. They didn't have a house. They didn't have kids. Nothing. Same shit. All right, not even a dryer. Crazy numbers too. <laughs> Man. Yeah, yeah. So you want to hear about the uh, gazebo story is wonderful. That's hilarious. Right? You want to hear about my run-in with the hotel employee at uh, three o'clock this morning? Today? Today? Really? Yeah. I woke up staying in the Hudson Hotel, which, uh -huh. by the way, is really cool. Uh, and I and they're going to be pissed at me for doing this, but I don't give a shit. It's a nice place. Though. It's <laughs> yeah, a great hotel. I, I love hotel. that hotel. hotel yeah. And I, you know, because I've always been kind of iffy on the hotels I stay in in New York, and I don't really like the W that much, and it's and really expensive, and and so this place, I was like, oh man, this is great. And uh, but I drink so in the middle of the night when I wake up I have cotton mouth and I just I drink a lot of water at night and uh, tons of it, and so I'm I'm waking up you know, barely it's three o'clock in the morning and I'm looking around uh, there's no water because usually there'll be a couple of waters sitting beside the bed or something and I get up I, they had upgraded me to a, a really cool little suite and I'm looking all over there's no water anywhere then I find the mini bar but it's just a refrigerator that's empty I'm like there's no water they gave me no water. But I remember when I got off the uh, elevator, there was a thing that said drinks and snacks and whatever. So it was just, just vending machines. So I go over there, and I couldn't find my glasses. I'm just kind of staring at it going, oh, man, what the fuck? And I'm waking up, you know, which I don't want to do. And uh, so I try. the. I try, it won't take money. It, it won't take money. It won't. I'm swiping my credit card through there. Clank, nothing. Oh, come on. So I go back and I'm pissed. I'm like, you know, even a one star hotel usually gives you a couple shitty bottles of water, right? And and this is a four star hotel and nothing. 
So I called the front desk and, uh, and, and, uh, and I was, you know, probably pretty rude and just in that, hey, do you have a suggestion box? <laughs> because you need to give people access to water, drinking water. It's really, everybody does it. I've never seen a hotel that doesn't do it. And he goes, well, there's a little thing in the, uh, the in the hallway. And, and uh, well, you just did it wrong. And it doesn't take American Express. I'm like, how do I know that? It's right there on it. And I'm, so I go down there and that doesn't work. So I go downstairs. And there's nobody at the front desk. I don't know where this guy was, where he's talking from me, but there's nobody there. And uh, so I open another door. I go, hey, hey. And this guy comes out. And I said, dude, I've tried everything to get water in this hotel, and I can't get it. And he goes, well, you cursed at me on the phone. I didn't curse at you. I cursed while I was talking to you. It wasn't like I called you a motherfucker. I said, my fucking, I don't have any fucking water, which I didn't. There's and, definitely uh, a difference between those oh, two totally, things. Absolutely, yes. yeah. So, so yeah. then the guy opens a cabinet, and he's furious. And he gets a bottle of, of uh, Voss water, and he, he slams it on the counter. He goes, there, are you happy? <laughs> I said, why don't you take a guess? <laughs> why don't you guess whether or not I'm happy right now? It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm down here talking to you. I got a national syndicated radio show <laughs> That's in the right. fucking morning. That's right. Right after this, he's headed there. Do you think you just made it better? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So then, uh, it's, it's, and that's the end of it. I, I, I got my old little water and went back to bed. But <laughs> then I wanted to talk to the manager in the morning and tell her this guy's uh, story. And, and But he'd already told her story. And she goes, well, there's always three sides to every story. What he says happened, what you say happened, and what really happened. Oh, I said, I just got through telling you what really happened, lady. And, 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 and then she saw the gruffer side of me, <laughs> which made her believe him. Yeah. Right? And, uh, this is like the TV tray thing with Steve. Do you remember the... His Oh, yeah. Tell him, tell right. him, tell him. But he's a target. This <laughs> right. Uh, we, yeah. we, Steve's staying at Margot's apartment and having these therapies done. And so I think, well, man, it'd be easier for him to eat if he had a TV tray. So I go down to or Target. And I'm kind of looking around, and there's these two employees standing next to each other and said, hey, I'm looking for a, a, a TV tray, something my buddy can eat off of. And uh, and he talks to her in Spanish, and then she talks to him in Spanish. And he looks at me, and he goes, uh, we don't have one. <laughs> and I said, in the whole store, you don't have one. You don't have a, a TV. You, and you know that for a fact. He goes, it's my department. <laughs> I'm like, so you don't have one? He goes, no, I don't. So I'm walking out, and I see an aisle that looks like it would be on that aisle if it was anywhere. And there was a TV tray right there. So I pick it up, and I took it back over to him. And I said, look, you do have TV trays. So before you start, so then this other manager guy comes up to me, and he said, is there a problem, sir? Just because my voice sounds gruff, you know, right. and he, is there a problem? I said, yeah. I asked that guy if there was a TV tray for sale in the store, and I would have been better off if he had said, fuck off, dude. <laughs> because then I would have known there might be one. <laughs> but he said they didn't have one at all. So I, I'd lost all hope. And then I see right there in plain sight is a goddamn TV tray. Uh, sir, you need to hold your voice down. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> they paid me. It's the best, best, best of the week. It's the best of the week. Very special day for the first time on our show, Artie Lang. What's up, hey. Artie? <laughs> What's up, guys? First what? of all, thanks for the support through all this craziness. <laughs> of course. You got to support. Yeah. That you just got to do that. Yeah. We, uh, before we get into anything, I, yeah. I just want to acknowledge that Ron White... Uh, Hour was great. I got here a little early, and I and I heard Mo. Oh, Vic is one of my favorite comics. I've known him forever. I don't know Ron, but listen to those two. It was like listening to a really smart, funny clan meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, before we get to the Jews, let me say I'll be playing Indiana Pennsylvania. <laughs> I mean, they are really funny guys, you and, know. And, and, and that and, was perfect. And they uh, like a drink or two. My well, God, <laughs> yeah, Ron's I, a legendary drink. I think yeah. Ron White was the problem with the water. By <laughs> the way i have to say I yeah th i think he might have uh, taken it a little too far how about when you know you're going to drink that excessively you just know you have water before you go to bed you don't wake up and expect someone to just bring you and, a gallon and if of you're beating the shit out of your body like he does then yeah. how about you just uh, take it out of the tap uh, just right. get some water Who out of the cares? tap and go back to yeah, bed exactly. i'm going to look for water right. get out of a hose <laughs> exactly yeah there are too many carcinogens in the tap <laughs> right. you just down like a bunch of rot gut whiskey he had water the whole time right yeah. there in the fucking bathroom 
You know, it's funny that, that you're talking about the Kennedys and everything. I used to play, I played that Cape Cod Melody Tent a couple of times up there in the middle of Hyannisport. And it's true that the cops were saying, you know, Bobby had 13 kids and there's all these cousins you never heard of before who still get in trouble. And the cops treat them like royalty outside of murdering. But maybe if they do murder somebody, they just pick them up, they take them to the compound, drop them off and say, we're not fucking with you. You're Kennedys, you know? They might have uh, murdered someone. We just don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> they already uh, they brushed look, that under the carpet. They looked the other way, but yeah. the stuff. I I, uh, I work with Bob Schimmel at this place once, okay? And it's outside. You probably know it being from my yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, uh, so I went on before Schimmel, and he goes on stage, and he had to do an hour. 20 minutes into his set, the people in the front row are screaming. They're pointing at his neck, screaming, like, oh, my God. A, a brown recluse spider had crawled up on, <laughs> on up Schimmel somehow and was on his neck. It looked like an enormous black spider tattoo, but it was a, 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 this poisonous spider. So the cops very calmly go to me, yeah, that's a recluse, yeah. And I said, so what are we going to do? He goes, well, if it bites him, he's got 20 minutes. Come on. Wow. Now, he goes, if that bites him, we got 20 minutes to get him to the hospital. So Schimmel <laughs> starts jumping around like a 13-year-old girl when he notices it. He's like, ah! Get it off me! Get it off me! Dance like something a guy really can't recover from. <laughs> like if you see a guy you think is cool dancing at a wedding or something, like that, you know, ah! the thing falls on the fucking ground, scurries to the front row, and the people in the front row dive away. Eventually, it calms down. Shimo picks up his mic and, like a pro, just finishes the just hour. Just keeps going. Gets him back. He was a real pro, man. How did he know he had it on his neck? 